issues and um, I need to buy a new computer it seems we my computer just worked for three weeks and now it's not working so I am having to save up for a new computer I don't have the money for it now so we are going back old school one screen until we can fix it again well, completely one screen if you're on instagram or i mean youtube or facebook you'll see me in the bottom yeah, left corner matthew i'm is, still here matthew is still Ladies. here he says working on a project so i don't think she's going to be joining us um we are live yes everywhere Great. hello guys hello welcome hi just welcome to live tuesdays we're a bit late because as per usual every single thing we tried everything we set up everything we tested worked until we go up live and um i think what we've realized now is that my 10 year old computer is not good enough and i yeah i just do not have the funding to buy a new one now so we will be doing old school one one stream or two until um we can get back to that hi everyone i'm amanda and i am from the company called fabric with an eight and we're an online creative supply store which specializes at the moment in sewing knitting and crochet but we um, our plan is to be your go-to craft and creative supplies so we are expanding every week we get new products and we're loading anyone any one of the old old our old timers if you want to go check we have two new things on pre-order available um, so you can have a look at that otherwise if you want to see the new stuff it's all under new um, yeah otherwise just browse the website is www.fabric with a number 8.co.za okay so live Tuesdays happens obviously every Tuesday at 7 and what we do is we normally do a, a sort of a half an hour to an hour depending on what we're doing tutorial where I try and show you something or explain things to you or we make something or something like tonight we I'm going to show you how to clean your machine and then if we have time left I'm also doing some bias binding another bias binding tutorial because it seems to be the only thing people are asking for and then after that we do a general Q&A where you can ask any question about sewing preferably because I'm the sewing expert <laughs> and um, if you have other questions of course you may ask them and I will find the answers before next week um, welcome thank you please tell us if you're here leave a comment speak to Matthew Matthew is there at the keyboards Matthew is here talking to you I'm sure Lisa is also tuned in, even though she has a project that has to be handed in on Monday for exams. So she is busy with that. Um, anyone who doesn't know, she's busy with a L, was it LLB, ne? LLM. LLM in Pretoria. So she every now and again has to actually be studying, which is sad. And um, okay, so uh, if there's any prelim questions anyone not knowing or not understanding please tell us otherwise give us a thumbs up if um if our sounds and everything is cool tell us so we can start yes is there any questions any questions at all let me know on any platform i am here i will try and see all of them but questions yes so um we don't have a pattern today because we're doing something different and also we have a written piece which we will probably publish later in the week because as i said lisa is is busy with studies so she cannot help us until monday <laughs> okay guys so, we do mm, have our first question yeah, of the night yeah. yes someone asked can you show us how to do those sleeve cuffs with the very thin elastic sleeve cuff it's it's just the elasticated sleeve. Is that what it is? I mean, I... I'm not sure you, I can't show you that tonight, but you're welcome to send us a WhatsApp at 061-533-4412. We also had a poll yesterday, and that wasn't on the poll. The most questions we got was, was for bias binding. 
um, cleaning your machine and then the zip foot which is all things except for the cleaning of the machine we've actually already got lives on so you can actually find that if you go to our website you'll see there's a like a pink pink button that says I think blog and another one that says free sewing lessons everything is in that pink button that you need all our previous patterns this is I think it's like live live Tuesday 27 or something so there's quite a few patterns there's quite a few tutorials already okay so we're gonna um, start I'm gonna start by showing you how to clean your machine there's a few things I have to say to you before that's very important so sorry for this lighting but because of oh, I'll, I'll explain okay so I've taken out my manual machine and the only reason I've taken out the manual machine is that my other machine is almost brand new so it's not going to be dirty so it's not going to actually you're not going to be able to see what how to clean your machine okay so obviously generally the first steps you're going to take when you decide to clean your machine is how many times do you clean your machines how do you know okay well if you sew every day if this is a job if it's something you do if you have your own business and you're making stuff um, to sell then you will probably need to do this once a week i know that sounds like a lot but remember you depending on how many how how many how much how often there we go how often you use your machine you will extend its life by actually cleaning it okay so if you sew every day seven days a week or let's go five days a week i would su suggest doing a quick clean once a week especially if you're sewing anything like fleece or fur or velvet or wool anything that creates a lot of fluff and you will see the fluff on your clothes you'll see the fluff on your cutting table so that is a very good indication that you should be cleaning your machine after after sewing that all right so why why is this necessary i um recently a while ago had actually someone i know who bought a manual machine like this and these are work workhorses they are like the city golfs of sewing machines they just go they never stop you really almost have to throw it out off a balcony to break it it has no computerized parts that you can you know i don't know that magically stops working or what 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 and her machine actually seized up completely first time in six years that i had any machine that did that and um, she brought it back to me and before I send anything back for a guarantee or non-guarantee or anything I test the machine myself and then I try and sort it out and what ha what had happened is this the needle stopped it didn't want it was it was seized okay very strange I I honestly I didn't know what I was doing because I'm not a mechanic and um, so what I did is I opened up here at the bottom which we're gonna do and I realized after speaking to her that she sews a lot of shui shui now the funny thing about shui shui is if you do not wash it before you sew it it has got starch in on the fabric that's why it's so hard and if you sew a lot of unwashed shui shui that starch creates creates dust starch dust okay and this stuff was like putty because now with the moisture in the air instead of just being starch dust it turned to starch putty or clay so i have never in my life seen a machine that looked like that and um when so i had to clean it all out it was extremely dirty i have photos somewhere it was extremely dirty and then what i did is i had to clean off the shaft also because of the dust and you don't see the dust when you're sewing but it is there and especially with starch being a powder that when it gets white it turns into something it's not just fluff that gets wet it actually absorbs the moisture out of the air it sort of it it puttied up everything but after cleaning it the machine worked perfectly there was nothing wrong with it and it still works till today i mean so 
So that's what I'm saying is you don't want to buy a new machine because you didn't clean your machine. Okay. So first things first, um, you need to know what your new machine needs. Okay. So in your machine's handbook, which mine is somewhere, somewhere, I don't know. But anyway, I don't know this. Um, I might have this one's book. Let's see if I can find one quickly. Anyway, in your machine's handbook, this is your go-to people. You are always gonna first go to the handbook if you don't know what you are doing. That's not it. Let's see if I can find another book. That might be it. Is this it? This is it. Okay. So the first thing you do, if you're doing anything you've never done before, or you're using a foot you've never used before, you will go to your manual. And in your manual will be everything you need. Or if, um, I know people don't use the manuals anymore, they go to Google, that's also fine, as long as you put in your machine and your machine's details or serial number, it should be fine. Okay, so in your book, um, somewhere, and this is, <laughs> every machine is different and every manufacturer puts it in a different way or puts it in a different place it will tell you some way if you should be oiling your machine okay so i sell five bottles of machine oil every week and my nerves are shot because i hope I really hope that people are buying this for oiling something else because the new sewing machines, most of them, um, do not need to be oiled. You do not oil it. It is a closed system. So there where it needs oil, it's a closed system. So even you pouring oil into it or dropping this in a vat of oil will not get the oil where it's needed. Okay. So very important. I always say, if you open up a brand new machine and you look at what comes in this brand new machine, which is still, a, it's a manual machine. So it's old technology, but it's a new machine. There is no little bottle of oil. Okay. So take it as, I almost want to say, take it as a default that if you did not receive a bottle of oil from the manufacturer, you do not need to oil your machine. However, that does not mean you don't need to service your machine. Your machine needs to be serviced depending on your use. So a general rule is once a year, if you are average user, if you are every day, seven day a week user, I would suggest that you actually start off by every six months. That's also people who sew seven days a week. That is why they generally don't sell their old machine, but just get a new one because while the one is being serviced, they can still work on the other one. All right. Okay. So we are going to clean this machine. Yay! I am going to show you if you should ever need to oil your machine, which is a new machine that doesn't get oil. There is one place where you may, you are allowed to use a little bit of oil. Okay. And that's all. We do not drop oil in it. It has, when you, when you service a car, they call it, um, I think they call it something like oiling nipples. Okay. It's a little hole and you'll see them on the old machines. They have them. It's a little hole that is a place where you throw the oil in and on the older machines, also in the book, you'll see a picture that shows you with a little bottle of oil where you should be oiling your machine okay those are the old machines the new machine has no oil nipples there is no little holes or places to put the oil in okay all right so when i'm talking about older machines i want you to picture this if you look at the um, older machines generally i'm going to just turn this machine generally it has a little flap here in front can you see it yes uh, a little flap in front that opens up and the bobbin case goes in vertically that is a vertical bobbin machine okay the newer machines which opens up here the bobbin goes in horizontally okay so if you have 
a horizontally or a top. Um, what is it? A, a top loading bobbin. Let's call it that. Then generally you do not need oil. That means it's quite a new machine unless your book states that. If you have a vertical or front loading bobbin, many times that is um, older technology and um, it might need oil. Please, people, don't listen to the internet. Listen to your book. If you don't have your book, try and find the original book or phone the original manufacturers or phone your dealer and ask. It's better to ask than to oil. <laughs> okay, all right. So, um, a few things that we need to know what they are. I'm gonna put this light on so that we have better view here. All right, so this we all know, this little thing here, the plastic thing, that is called the pressure foot. This is your pressure foot lever up and down. Obviously, we're gonna work with it up. And the first rule of cleaning your machine and you'll see I have no power attached. That's why I need the extra light because I cannot use the machine's light, which is very handy, but it is also a way to get a needle through your, through your finger. If you want to work, <laughs> if you have to work with the power on, please remove the needle because you are gonna be working right under the needle the whole time now. Okay, so pressure foot, pressure foot lifter, that little silver bit with the metal teeth that's called your feed dog and this whole part except this is obviously the button button, ugh, button. <laughs> the bobbin holders the lip okay that's not part but this part that we're going to take off is called the needle plate now some people might have uh like this machine has a lot more plastic the bigger machines have more metal um but generally underneath the foot, there's a piece of metal. Some machines that just click in and most machines have like these um, screws that you have to unscrew to do this. Okay, so that is called a needle plate. Now in a top loading machine, the thing that your bobbin goes in, the little haichi or the holder, it is not called a bobbin case. Okay, it is called an inner rotary hook. I'm going to show it to you just now. Now remember if anyone has older machines or has worked on industrial machines, it has a silver bobbin case that's loose from the machine that you put the bobbin in and then you front load it. That is called a bobbin case. Okay, so when you're working on the modern machines with the top loaders, that thing that your bobbin goes in is called an inner rotary hook because that is the rotary hook mechanism that makes the stitches all right okay so first of all obviously we have no power i'm going to take our bobbin out and in your machine there are various different things you'll get a little flat silver disc that for years i didn't know what they are i couldn't find one to show you um but this, this is also, you'll see funny silver things, they're normally screwdrivers. So that flat little silver disc that you get with the machine, that's actually a screwdriver because you can't use a normal screwdriver here, there's not enough space. All right, so this is one of my bigger machine screwdriver, but, um, and normally I just get the screw a little bit loose and then I, because it is, it is possibly the most painful space or place to unscrew a screw okay and you find yourself a place where you can hide or put your screws so you don't lose them okay because this is just it's not just normal screws it's you're gonna have to order it from the brand if you if you lose it okay so we're gonna take out those screws and as I said on this one this bit is plastic but on other machines it might be metal all right and then we are going to try and lift this whole part there we go lift it okay and normally it clips in some way or something but you need to take that out and that is what's called the needle plate okay 
both older machines or front loading and top loading machines both of them have a needle plate so you can still do this bit on a front loading machine also so you're going to just make sure that there is no gunk stuck as i said um, it is very possible that you will get all sorts of weird stuff in here and when that's clean you're going to put that aside now the next bit on these machines is we need to take out the inner rotary hook that let me put it like that that is the inner rotary hook i don't know if you guys can see the dust but now we need to do the same to this is clean it thoroughly okay if you find i use an old makeup brush but a good makeup brush because it must not be losing its hair all right most machines do have its own little hard brush and that helps to get like the if there's little bits of putty or i call it putty it's just um it's just gunk that that got uh e so it sometimes okay so we've now this is called the inner rotary hook and let me somewhere explain the inner rotary hook um it goes in a certain way there's normally a little mark on it you see this one has a little white mark and there's a matching white mark on the machine and um for to to put it back in now it is this is an old machine i've used this in class so i want to show you I especially went and searched for machine I knew would be dirty. Just look at this. Look at that. Can you see that? Okay, so you don't want to go brushing and poking and trrr. it's not you 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 almost want to sort of lift the dust. As I said, this machine, I've, nev I've, I've possibly never cleaned it, looks like it. But that's a very good example for you guys to see what can be in a machine. Because all my other machines, I, I cleaned quite often. Okay, so the next thing we need, which is also an integral part of cleaning your machine, is having a bent nose tweezer. Because many times... I actually want to put this on white so you guys can see what comes out of here because okay so that's that's one part of the gunk and sometimes it's actually just easier to go in there especially if it's big big bits oh i just switched off my own light big 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 bulky bits okay now i know there's people who are going to say oh but you can use um those compressed air bottles no you can't firstly because the compressed air if you blow it look at this there's an old needle um this is what happens to student machines <laughs> um you don't want to get moisture in here if you can help it so you just this is this as i said this machine is very dirty i'm actually quite glad that it is because now it gives you a very good indication of what it can look like inside and when you've sort of gotten rid of all the big big bits that you can see that is when you are going to go in here with your small brush and try and get it all out of here see look look at that that is a dirty machine these machines also were used a lot for for swish it swish with let me get my s's aren't very good tonight okay and and the more you clean your machine the actual better it becomes it actually becomes easier you can see this machine hasn't been clean in a while so it's got quite a bit of stuff stuck all over that i need to fish out of here you can see it's still coming this is also um 
if you break a needle and you can't find a piece like obviously someone did when they were using this machine and um, just put in a new needle and not checked to find where is the old where did the old needle the piece of the needle it normally generally goes underneath the um, <coughs> oh, in a rotary hook and it's quite important that that comes out because it can being in there it can really damage your machine okay so you are <laughs> I'm gonna keep pressing this you're gonna check all of in here. You're gonna check between the what they call the feed dog because I can see. Look there. I can see bits and pieces sitting in there. Look. Isn't that just amazing? Okay, I'm gonna check in there, and I'm gonna dust it all out. Promise you, this is the best thing you can do for your machine and there is no self-cleaning machine don't let any, anyone tell you that that is not a thing <laughs> okay so now that i'm woo, stepping and falling let me just see if i can see in here is some more you also don't want to blow into your machine you almost want to sort of lift it out of your machine instead of blowing it into your machine Maybe I should just... okay, normally you can go around your machine but i now have to okay all right i'm just gonna tie up my hair because i'm gonna get my hair stuck in the machine it's like a power tool let's not have loose hair okay once i'm happy that I have gotten all the gunk out. All right. All the gunk. Oops, I've taken the foot. That's fine. Doesn't matter. Okay. Once I'm happy with that, I am now going to reinsert the inner rotary hook. And I've got my little white mark. I see another dust bunny. I'm going to take my white mark and I'm going to insert the mark over the mark on the machine. This takes a while to get used to guys. Remember when your machine have, it has an inner rotary hoop, you cannot put it back when the plate is on because this plate is quite strong and it's metal. It will damage your inner rotary hook. You also don't want to scrape or anything with your inner rotary hook because if it gets marks or little nicks or anything it will not pick up your thread and it will not do what it's supposed to do all right so now I'm done with that you are welcome to take a little wet wipe I always like cleaning here also because this is where the old dust goes and sits Okay, you don't want to wet wipe inside you want to be sure that everything let's see also remember if you have a machine with a little blade like mine has a little blade there for its trim for its trim I you must check that it that the blade is actually clean okay once that is done once I've reinserted my inner rotary hook I can go back and reinsert my needle plate now guys um, the first time um, you do this with any new machine that you haven't see I know all brothers so that that helps me but if I take someone else's I don't know Haskavarna or Bernina and I start doing this it's not gonna go this quick but you get used to how your machine fits back together Someone okay. asked, can you use a vacuum to suck up fluff, no, dirt and dust? No, no, because oh. because the problem with the dirt is is it is actually if you look at it, look look what I can do with it. It is, it is it, it it's it's not just dust. It becomes it sticks 
It, that's why I use the tweezer. It sort of sticks to the side of everything. So um, be very careful when you insert something in there that you don't damage parts that you sh that you shouldn't. Well, yes. But if you can find a thin enough little vacuum cleaner, you can try that. Just remember that you do not want to use anything that will put moisture in there and you also do not want to use anything that's going to blow all of this into your machine where you can't reach it okay so once that is back <coughs> my inner rotary hook is in i can now use the bobbin i'm not going to sew with this machine now uh, these little flaps people difficult to get i can get all of the brother ones but I know on, on some other machines, they're difficult to get. Look after them. All right. And we're going to add that. And now I'm going to show you the one place that you are allowed to use a tiny little bit of machine oil. It is not olive oil. It's not macadamia oil. It's not car oil. It's not lawnmower oil. It is sewing machine oil. If you do not have the right oil, do not it's not Q20 because Q20 is a lubricant, it's not a it's not an oil. It is none other than sewing machine oil. And you're gonna put a little bit of oil on your Q on a Q-tip. And on, you can clean this. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a silver bar. It's the bar that that goes up and down yeah and there is the silver needle bar there's two round bars going up and down your machine first we're going to just clean it off and that little bit of oil that you're going to be and literally people it's a wet q-tip it's not a runny oil q-tip it's a wet q-tip it is just to basically clean this metal it's not really there for oil it's just to clean the metal okay so that is the only place you can ever you should ever put oil on a new machine all right once this is closed you are welcome to wet wipe as much and as hard and as every way as you can for instance these machines they get extremely dirty at the back here you can see all right and I, I always think, why do they design a hole like that? Because why look at what's coming out of there. Anyway, so you can use your wet wipes to clean. There we go. And um, I always have wet, wet wipes in my sewing room for spills and also cleaning this table if it gets, I don't know, coffee or something spilt on it. Um, that's what you're going to do there clean clean everywhere i'm not going to clean it all now you can see normally these horizontal bits is which catches the dirt the quickest now i'm going to turn the machine because i want to show you inside inside here is what we call a tension plate now it doesn't happen very often i've had very few times that it happens so what i'm going to do is I'm going to take normal thread and I make it three times. So it's three, three, three pieces of thread, and I'm going to just so it's it just gives me a little bit of a thicker thread, okay? And I'm going to floss. I'm literally going to floss, just floss in in here. Just to make sure that whatever is stuck in there is not stuck anymore. The same thing can be done on this. This is also a little tension plate. That's the one you use for bobbins. So you can just floss it. Uh, you can actually use normal floss also. And that, guys, is it. This machine is not clean enough yet. I will finish it tomorrow. All right. That is that. Ooh. It's 
amazing how dirty a machine can get. That is absolutely the last machine that's not been cleaned in my class. Off from classes. Okay, so that's it. These, um, when you, as I said, when you're using a brush, it's always good to use like these. Are, you will feel they're quite tough. That is because we do not want them to break off and sit inside. So I do all the hard, heavy cleaning with the hard brushes. And then afterwards, um, I will just fluff the last bits of fluff away with the makeup brush. But please don't use a new cheap one because those hairs will just get stuck in your machine. All right, so I'm going to just pack this all away so we can let's look at this one thing quickly if i recall i'm just gonna sorry guys for that weird little that weird little moment there okay so actually i think it's right over using this bottle just as a little test quickly <laughs> sorry for that yes amanda right where the bottle is now i didn't want to leave a little mm -hmm. mark or something right there that is where the zoom is right now it was on your um your your machine yes. now it's there so if you want to show anything actually, up close to the camera i actually mark that on the table. Oh, I did not see that. Sorry. Yeah. So that was a little piece of thing there. So if you want to show anyone up close on the stitch cam, you can put it there. It is working. Okay. So that is our machine. Guys, very important. Read your book. Nobody does it. I don't know why. Am I the only one that think I'm stupid enough not, not to get to want to be not breaking my new machine? Yeah, okay. guys, come on. Reading is reading is cool. Yeah. All right. So next bit, as I said, we have done this before, but we are gonna do a quick one again. I don't have the notes and the everything that will the 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 bias finding notes will stay the same as the previous time, but I am just gonna show you guys how we cut bias, how we measure, how we cut, and how we use the bias binding things. Curtis David says, I love the color of your hair. I'm a green freak. Oh, <laughs> yeah, on eh? The Kwabi says, that's awesome. I was wondering how to get in there to clean. Yeah, there's many videos on, on the internet. So if you couldn't see close enough because our cams didn't work like they should tonight, um, there is, there are many, many videos. Um, so, oh, this is classic me. I can't work with fabric that's not ironed. Is this, it's not gonna, this is cotton, so it's gonna be a hard iron. And the iron's not a hard kick. Okay. Sorry, I have a block of chocolate in my mouth. All right, so. I was using that to mark the thing. I can't believe you ate my mark. What do we need? Firstly, tried and tested. These are the best rulers ever for any marking. I also use the Alpha Rotary blades when I'm cutting um, bias binding. But you do not need that because you can cut it with the scissors. It's just easier with a, um, a rotary cutter. And remember guys, if you're using the rotary cutter, you do need these um, cutting mats on your table. All right, so we have them in a set. This is a bias binding maker is what I call it. We also have them loose. I have previously said this. This, remember, I so, I've been sewing much longer than I've had this shop. So my collection, I wish I could have things that just match each other, but I unfortunately still have all my old stuff. My collection looks, every one of them looks different, but they are all the same thing. And a nifty little tip, because all of these things are marked in inches. And really, honestly, it pisses me off immensely because I do not understand inches. And I don't, I'm not going to change all my sewing to inches to just match this. So what I did is I literally went, measured the inches and then measured the centimeters or this one, for instance, does it have? Wait, this one must have lost it. Then let's go with this one. 
this one is i'm assuming it can't be 18 inches so i'm assuming it's 1.8 inch the 18 is for 1.8 inch okay so what i did is i literally went on a ruler with inches obviously i went to 1.8 inches and then i measured how many centimeters that was and then i cut myself a strip you know it sounds like a stupid person but trust me every time i see them i never know which one what it's going to look like when it's done i cut the strip i ironed them so now i know that this one makes this because that's 3.5 and i took a a sharp um, like a, a metal or something that will scratch metal and I actually wrote on there 3.5 I don't know if you guys can see it here but if you look you'll see it says 3.5 scratched in the metal so that I don't have to think about it all right so the same with this one I scratched 5.5 centimeters this one 2.5 centimeters and this one 1.8 centimeters and I made myself a little sample up here so that when I am deciding what size bias binding I want to use, looking at this does not help me. I'm a visual person, so these are the, I'm going to try and put them like that so you can see, the finished widths of these four binding makers. Actually, I didn't do this. I think a lecturer showed me how to do this. So you can see. So now I can choose which one I like to use. I generally like this one the most. Um, or this one. I don't like these really thin ones. They really don't stitch liquor. Um, okay, so we're just going to go with the middle one. Which is this green one. And I wanna, I'm just going to iron it quickly. So that I don't lose my, my ironing. I wonder where my clapper is. Guys, there's a poll on, uh, for those of you on YouTube, there's a poll in the comments. Give us your votes on the poll. Okay, so if I open this piece of fabric up completely, okay? So from that side, it's difficult to see now because it's all ironed. But if I try and flatten it like that, let me try and get here in small can. If I flatten it like that, from that edge to that edge is 3.5 centimeters. All right, okay. So this is the size that I'm gonna use and this matches this one. Okay, next thing we need to know, actually I'm gonna just cut this fabric a little smaller. We don't need that big a piece to uh, show you what's happening. Okay. So let's just cut another. I just want to give so I can explain to people who's never actually worked on bias. It needs to be a long piece. Okay. So if we think of fabric, it is an, in a roll at the store like this. Okay. So you guys to go to the store and you tell them you want one meter of this fabric. Okay. The important bit to know about fabric is that those two edges, the edges of the roll, that is called your selvage, okay? And parallel to your selvage, which is those two edges now, runs the grain line, the stark draught, okay? And in Afrikaans, we have a word for it like this. This is a swak draught, so it's the weak line. Grain line, which is the stack draught, and weak line. Okay? So, it will always be like this. When you cut off a, on a roll, the two edges of your roll will be your selvages, and parallel with your selvage runs your grain line. Let me get a pen so we can start drawing on this okay so that edge it normally looks a little bit uh, different and this edge is your selvage 
Deborah on Facebook says, I'm pleased to know that I am not the only one that has to see things rather than go with measurements. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I don't like thinking. When I, I know how to do vice binding, I know how to cut it, but I don't know inches. <laughs> okay, this is called the cut edge, obviously. This is the bit we cut, we cut through here. All right, and remember what I said, parallel. Parallel, I don't know who did, who did maths? That means parallel, no? Me. Parallel to the two salvages is the grain line. Yay! 90 degrees, let's do some more maths, that's that square. 90 degrees to your grain line is your, I call it a weak, weak thread. It's a swak draad, okay? All right, now, bias. When they talk about cutting on bias, but bias runs through here. Who can give me the answer of the degrees of this corner? Don't say, Matthew. You see, I don't, I don't know why you assume. Don't. I, know, I, I have absolutely no, no idea what's going no. on now. I understand math, but as soon as you introduce so many into it, I became lost. Ugh, Nia Matthew, come on. Okay, so who can tell me at what angle does this purple line run comparative to the grain and the weak thread? This is going to disappear, guys. You need to ask, answer quickly. Look, look, it's disappearing already, the purple. Okay, shall I just give them the answer? Anyone answered? No? No one is, no, no one is. Okay, is, hey, I'll just give it to you. They say that if you could, I think the purple looks a lot better than the blue on there. It's a little bit difficult to see the blue. Oh, people gave okay. answers on Instagram. Wait, wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the purple you say and works. Do. And let's see if we can get like a, a bright, let's go purple and a light purple. Yes, I'm there's just... a lot of extra answers. You've got Lisa K on, on YouTube, Diana on YouTube, Ashley Bell's on, on Instagram, okay, so Amina gonna... on Instagram. They all said 45. Are you they correct? Are all correct. Deborah as well. Yes, see, lots of people are 45. Smart. A lot of people, 45 degree angle. I'm going to try and redraw these for the people who couldn't see. I am using permanent koki, so this is not going to be beautiful um, by binding. <laughs> Okay, so that's the salvage here on the edge. And let's just do our parallel signs. Let's do, and then the weak thread is here. And 90 degrees, this one. Okay, shall I hold it up so you can see, guys? How's that? I'm going to come closer for that one also. All right, so this is the bias bias grain so when they say I'm going to show it again to you and yeah so when a fabric or a pattern tells you to cut on bias okay I'm going to explain it to you so you can like I always say to my students if you understand it like a stupid person you will never forget it I explain like a stupid person because I, I, I learned and understood it like someone who knew nothing. Okay, so if we normally have a pattern piece, I don't have small pattern pieces, so we're going to go with this is our pattern piece. It is a weird, I don't know, whatever, funny short with a hole in the crotch. Okay, so on this pattern piece, there will normally be a grain line okay so if we cut normal fabric uh, and the grain line lies like that we cut everything showing in the same direction because we need to lay the patterns out with the arrow for the grain line parallel to the actual grain line or the edge of your fabric the selvage of your fabric okay so when you get the same pattern it's another piece it is going to go and it's going to say to you, it's going to, many patterns actually show you the grain line still. 
and it will show you like that and it'll say cut on bias okay so what's the difference between this one these two this one lays parallel with the grain line this one what have i done uh, lisa k says that the english word is straight grain which is opposite to the grain line then the 45 degree is the cross grain if that means anything yes yes okay sorry <laughs> i just i just completely confused myself okay so what happens is it says cut on bias ne? so instead of your grain line and your grain line of your pattern matching up your grain line is now changing to the bias line on the fabric so the fabric is bias so you're gonna if this is cut on bias it will lay like that okay this is higher grade people working with bias when you work with dresses and skirts very difficult um it is uh it is an advanced skill because there's a lot of actual sewing methods and 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 things you have to be careful for with when you work on bias and i'm going to show you why actually um vuyukazi says do you sell ribbons that i can use as labels the custom made one not yet soon but not yet okay so I'm gonna redraw our picture because I have I didn't actually okay so this okay is our grain line okay got that all right what did she call it the swak draught what did she say cross um, the cross grain that's a word I like that word she said um, the English word is straight grain which is opposite the grain line and then the 45 degrees is the cross grain I don't know yeah oh okay I didn't know that. Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to go with my wording because otherwise I'm going to confuse myself. Grain line, start draad. Start means strong. And this is swak draad. So you're going to go with weak or it's not the cross, it's the other one. It's the grain line. No, it can't Or the be. straight grain. Straight grain. Okay. Yeah, it does not make sense. That's why I didn't remember it. See, I said learn like a stupid Yay! person. <laughs> okay. So that's your grain line, and that's your. It's it's. Uh, there's a reason why I remember it like this. So remember this. This is a stack draught in Afrikaans, so it's a strong grain. Okay. So if I take this fabric and I pull right on its grain line, can you see there's almost no stretch movement? Okay. Now in Afrikaans, this is your swak draught, so 90 degrees, meaning the weaker one. And you will see that if this this is a stretch cotton, if there's a stretch worked into it, it's normally on there. Okay. Cool. So we have some <coughs> questions. What is the advantage of using bias? I'll explain that now. Okay. And then one other thing, mm -hmm. Lisa K, who was telling you about the cross grain and the bias mm -hmm. grain and like that, she says that she she's not a professional. She cheated and looked it up, and <laughs> then and then she told me not to tell you, oh, and then okay. I told her I okay, wouldn't, okay, but okay, I lied. Okay. All right. So the reason why I now have another piece of fabric is I want to show you. So this is if you're making a tight fitting uh, stretch shirt, that is the weak grain. So the, the actual stretch on this fabric is, so it, it is woven with elastane or something in it to give it that stretch. Now normal fabric, that is the straight grain. See, no stretch. The weak grain, can you see that it can you see my fingers can it actually moves okay so now look we're gonna find all right this is not a stretch fabric okay it stretches a little bit but it's not a stretch fabric like that but look at this can you see how the bias line can stretch on a non-stretch fabric Okay, so that is why bias binding is cut on bias so that that bias binding is stretchy so it can go around curves, which are normal. If you take ribbon, if you, if any of you have ever tried to, to edge something with ribbon, 
normal ribbon you will find as soon as it starts curving you get gathers here or folds there it's because it's not stretching with the curve while bias binding does stretch with the curve and um, what was that question Matt what is the advantage of bias binding okay that's the advantage of bias binding bias binding if I am taking bias cutting anything on bias if I'm taking this and I'm gonna do that I don't really have the body for it and she doesn't have boobs so we'll stick to that if I'm doing that I need all my design skills to put in dots and all sorts of things to give me shape while if I take something that's cut on bias it's not really a big enough piece of fabric and I need to find the bias there can you see that it it will shape around my body okay so it's making I want to say this but it is like giving non stretch fabric a little bit of stretch okay but the problem let me show you guys what the problem is so if I am cutting this I'm gonna just so I do a, a wild cut on bias all right and I am sewing this seam together Can you see this so working on on uh, or seaming on bias is quite a skill because you need to get your tension perfect you need to actually work uh, you, you there's there's the pressure of your foot there's all sorts of things because what happens is you sew and it stretches and then it and then you get you must have seen it before that puckering on the side on the dress because it, it just looks like the two seams were pulled into each other that is what happens to bias so just google how to actually sew bias seams and how to make it easier on yourself and that is all i suggest and as i said before don't start your first project and and do a bias cut dress let's let's do you know okay so now we're gonna cut our bias bias binding all right so that is my selvage can you see that's my selvage and my bias you can see how i do this if i do that and i get a perfect square okay yeah. that is my straight grain 90 degrees to it is my weak grain and at a 45 degrees angle is my bias so i'm just gonna iron this just so that we have a nice flat edge to start with obviously you should iron your whole piece of fabric but we are <coughs> not going to be too bothered with that okay so that is our 40 this is bias oh you can't see that let's redo that color bias and it is a 45 degree angle okay and we have already decided if i can find my we have decided to use the green one the green one and i know i've already worked it out that the green one i need my bias strips to be 3.5 centimeters each okay so now this is a problem on my table i have uh, two two um cutting mats next to each other so it's not going to cut through there just putting it out there before we start so obviously i don't want my first piece of binding to have two edges so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just cut right on the edge so that i open up this fold and i have as i said it's not going to cut what is happening Ooh, to keep people away from my my blades you can see it is being used this is a new blade 
Anyway. Okay. Yo, that's not not cool. Anyway. All right. And we're gonna go down here. And we're just cutting right on the edge. So I'm cutting like a two mil. So that I have a open. And by open, I mean both of these pieces are now loose from each other and not a fold anymore. Okay, so the next plan, and I am going to use a black koki because I don't have a thin, thin colored koki, is I need three, what did we say? Three and a half centimeters. So I'm going to make a line when you know what you're doing. You don't actually need to draw a line anymore. You could just use this ruler um, and just cut at three and a half centimeters. All right, so that's my first piece of bias binding. You can actually go through with this line. I'm just going to cut two so you guys get a feel for it. Um, three and a half, again, lining up. There we go. Three and a half and three and a half and i'm going to show you obviously um you can cut this with a with your rotary cutter but i want to show you that one can also do it old school i never had a rotary cutter for years so you can just physically cut your bias binding on your line okay that's it there we go so um madeleine asks are you making continuous bias binding no i'm not i don't like continuous bind binding it, it eats too much fabric and i i actually buy bias binding people to be very honest with you i don't make um, the only reason you would, I don't know, you know, you can get longer. I don't know. I just know I, I don't. That's that's something that you can Google. It's all gimakor, and it's. I find it quite irritating to make it. This is not continuous. I'll show you. Two pieces. See. All right. Okay. So now, I don't know about you guys, but I always get all confused in my pop when you start telling me I have to join these two so instinct instinct nah, listen instinct I'm gonna go to this point where you can zoom instinct says oh I'm gonna put those two pieces together and then I'm just gonna sew there but I want to tell show you what happens there you do not get a, a straight line okay so what the opposite of what you think you should do is what you should do. Um, Lisa K says a rotary cutter is such a game changer and the plastic ruler makes it safer to use. Yes. And then you do we have a metal ruler thing so that you don't cut your ruler? A metal ruler thing? No, but I do have a little a, a short ruler that has a bit of metal on it. But if you use your rotary cutter right you should never actually i've never cut into the side the thing that does cut into the side of your ruler is anti cutters or what do you guys call it box cutters they are prone to go into your side of your ruler but these rulers are actually harder than normal plastic rulers they are made to actually use with a rotary cutter okay so i want it again i um taught myself Obviously guys, I just want to say this sounds really funny, but I did study three years of fashion and before that I sewed for 30 years. So I know what the right way is and if you go look at my notes on bias binding, you will see there is a right way and, and, and it's you're welcome to use it. I am trying to give you guys tips for when you're standing at your table and you don't feel like going to Google or finding my notes, alright? So what we need is we need these two pieces to be a continuous piece. All right. So I always do this. 
Why do you have to join them though? I mean, because no. you need a longer piece. Say so this is for around a quilt. And then uh, Deborah on Facebook says, wants to look. I use a twin needle and don't need to use bias binding on necklines, etc. Much easier. Yeah, no, I know. But I, I like use, using bias binding as a decorative thing. And so um, yeah. a lot of people saying they need the ruler and that's the next purchase yes can't you just use one strip okay no then I yeah yeah if you can get it long enough that's where that continuous bias binding thing comes in um and 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 that's that's why people use that okay so what i always do now because i have a a very visual brain so you give me notes and i will just go i still need to actually physically touch feel and figure it out so my mind works things out with pictures all right or by actually physically doing it then i never then i never have to figure out what is the right way because i'm just gonna okay so what we need is we need this piece of bias binding okay, to be right sides together so what do we need we need to put them like that okay and guys people are going to tell you you need to go skew you have to go skew you don't need to you, don't need to. you can just go straight down here cut this straight you can just do that and whoop 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 whoop, whoop. so like that and it will be bound like that you can just do that okay the other method is very difficult because i'm not going to show it to you because it, it it's going to look like i'm doing it in mirror um go look i have notes on that how to actually put these two because by default if you're cutting at a 45 degree angle you'll get these little bits on the ends that look like that all right okay so now that we have our bias binding Let's Yay! get our ironing board out again. And we so much just we okay, we don't need the um, two pieces to be together. And we need this. We need this, and I need to find my clapper. My clapper. I need to mark it because I'm scared someone's gonna end up with my second hand clapper. <laughs> All right, so this, if you look at it, it has this little bit here because this is the bit you can hold on to. Same with this. This is the bit you can pull and hold on to. So when you use a binding tool, you it doesn't really matter which way you use it, but just so you know, that's what that extra bit is for. But when you load, your bias binding tool you are loading from the bigger side so it's the the fatter side and you are gonna put in I always use the pointy bit for this so I don't cut straight but I just want to get away from that fluff and this is this is the ultimate tool here yeah? what Letty asks what ruler are you using and where can I buy it? I will I'll do the rulers just now let me just do this okay so can you see there's a slit in here they all have it it's at the back it's to help you just feed it through okay so we are loading it right side out so this is the right side at the top and we're gonna just start pulling it and I always turn it around because now is when I I always set it up a little bit so that i can see that it's actually folding correctly and i'm going to put my iron on there and i am just going to pull an iron and pull an iron and pull an iron and you can clap if you if you have a, a miss you get like fabrics that keep popping up i think it's some of them has if they have a lot of um poly in them or um and they need i think my steam my my iron is empty so my steam is also not working perfect so that is when 
the iron and the clapper works really well because now we are Matthew, won't you put a little bit of water in here for me? Sure. I forgot to actually check my iron has water in it. It doesn't. And we are just going to keep pulling. So this works very well, obviously, on a big, long ironing table if you want to do bigger bits. But I have gotten so used to these, this little ironing board that I actually never actually take out my big one. And this is, if anyone doesn't know, this is called the Prim Mini Steam Iron. It is the cutest, most amazing little thing. You see, everything you get with it is like mini, mini. Okay, and there you can see now it's actually steaming. So, all right. Okay, so we're gonna just do our last little bit. You can pull that a little bit. Because when it comes out, you have to actually catch that edge rather quickly. And obviously, um, the clapper works even. Can you see how good it works with steam? Check that last bit. I'm going to just do this so you can actually see how the clapper works when you're using steam. Can you see how flat? How... You guys, if you're learning a lot today, if you're enjoying it, leave us a like, leave us a comment, say lots of nice things in chat. Okay, we definitely so, appreciate it. So there's my bias binding with its two little lips at the back. And I want to show you that if I take this piece of fabric, I'm going to put this, this is the grain line. I'm just cutting down the edge so you can get it. Okay, so this is the grain line. Okay, can you see there's no stretch in there? Okay, now I'm going to take this piece of bias binding. Let's cut it the same length so you can actually see how that happens. Just check here now. Huh? How amazing is that? Same piece of fabric. Alright, okay, so. Um, I have previously shown um, there is a there is another bias binding video on on how to actually put it onto fabric. But um, if we need to repeat that again, we can. But that there is videos on that. I always use a bias binding with the with it ironed another in the center again, so that I have all my lines. And when I fold it around the edge, I have that middle line to know that I'm actually in the middle of the bias binding. All right, I think that's it for tonight. Guys, oh, you asked about the rulers. Let me show you. Okay, so this is my ruler. It's a so easy ruler. I'm just going to go get them. Just hold, please, guys. They come in different lengths and shapes, but this is sort of the best one. Okay, so this is mine. I have three, so easy. It's this one. <coughs> and it's all centimeters all right so easy also has one in inches so these red lines are an inch apart okay then we have a different brand that is also in inches yeah it's inches I thought maybe there was some different now these are this is another one with inches and then inches are used with quilting quilting patterns and and working with quilting is still all in inches so that's why i also have an inches one just for quilting all right and then we have this one so we have the so easy and we have this one which is the alpha it's the same as this brand and it's a little bit more expensive than the so easy but the reason i like it is because of this so remember that 45 degree angle that we were wanting to find and also when you're doing full circle skirts and quarter circle and three quarter circle and one eighth and this is it's quite handy to use and also we also have these little handles which are also very very cool I don't use you can see mine is stuck down 
so that it can't actually fall off. So yes, we have them. This is a 16. The, uh, the, the so easy one is a 16 by 61 centimeter. And the Ulfa one is 15 by... Interesting, one, two, three, four, by 60. So the Ulfa one is one centimeter small. But I, I quite like, and I also like the, the black. So if you're working on... I don't have one of these because I have three so easies when I... I quite like the black shows up very nicely. If you have fabric. The red also. I mean, I'm used to using the red. It's just that I don't have this one, so I like that one. <laughs> okay, so those are the rulers. And then um, this is our mini table ironing board. And this is our mini steam iron. And this is called a clapper. We have them also. And another handy little tool that if you watch my videos, you see me use it. This is called the double the double sided ironing a uh, sleeve ironing board, but it also works. It can double up as if you're doing a lot of um, bias binding. It also works really well for that. And then we have our sleeve roll, and we also have the sewing ham, the tailor's ham. Those are under our professional fabric a professional pressing tools i'll show you the sticker <laughs> we now have a sticker which is hidden from me it's being hidden from me yep no it's hidden from me i can't find it i am not allowed to show it okay guys that is it for our tutorial any questions we're gonna do 15 20 minutes if you have any questions please ask me now i'm gonna just take a sip of coffee while I give you some time. I mean, ask what is twill tape used for? Um, I don't actually know what people use it for. I use it for strapping. <laughs> but the other day I was Googling twill tape because I had to find a description for the website. And it was, people say that they actually use it um, to do like hemming. Don't ask me how. I assume that's when your dress is, you know, like that point where you've outgrown your school dress and there is no more fabric to drop the the hem. You can use the, you can attach the twill tape to the hem, the five millimeter, and then you can turn up the the the, the, the twill. But I wouldn't use it for that. I use the twill tape as I said, but I'm sure there is different uses and crafting uses uses and I know a lot of people when they um when they make boxes and they want to stick edges and things they use that but I only use it for strapping on bags and then um these are these are backpacks I'm gonna show you guys anyone that's new here this week oh I was gonna still finish the bag I was meant to um put the string in this is our previous uh, big project that took quite a few weeks, but the pattern is on the website and it's free. You can download it, print it to A4, and that, it just needs to be actually pulled in there. But that is our backpack we made, and it has two pockets in front, and a nice big pocket that fits a laptop or whatever. So, um, mm -hmm. we had some other things we we're going to do to, today. Are we going to do them next week? What is that? The Stitch in the Ditch Meated Corner okay, Zip Okay, I'm not going to... We did, the machine's not set up right. So, we can do the uh, the Meated Corner. I can I can show you that. Because we did next week, if you want to, it doesn't matter, I don't think. If it depends I'm, I'm, just, I'm just scared that um, because I'm not actually sewing the bias binding, maybe we'll do a quick bias, um, sewing the bias binding because the Meated Corner is is that um i had someone ask about a meted corner so i'm not quite sure which meted corner does she want to um just if you're doing a tablecloth for instance okay let's go there so when we do a tablecloth we are um if i can find any of my let's go with 
doesn't really matter. I'm just going to buy any. Okay, so we're going to do, I'm obviously doing this bigger than it should, but just so you guys can actually see. So um, when we do a tablecloth and you want to do a mitted corner, you will first, I always first iron in the hem because then it's very, very easy. Okay, obviously if you're doing this, it'll get another turn. Okay, but we're not doing that. So before you actually sew it down, that's why I iron. I want to just get that nice and flat. If you iron this corner and you give it a clap, you actually have lines. Can you see? So what you need to do is you go, you're going to match that line and that line, and you're going to just fold like that. You're going to iron and obviously pin or whatever, and that's how you get a meter corner. Can you see? So you first do it, as I said, the stupid way. You just turn that one. You start. Let's make it bigger. Let's make it bigger. So I could actually, let's do it again. My fabric is just not cut straight, so I'm going to, let's go big. Let's go big or we go. Okay, so we're going to do huge ones so that you can see the lines. Okay, so you just fold them like this. You don't have to iron it, but you're going to obviously pin or whatever. This is the hems. So we're going to open it up. Can you see that it makes a perfect little square here? So I need to fold to exactly the point of that square. I'm going to line up that line there and I'm going to line up this line here. I'm going to fold that back and you could do it two stepper. So we're going to iron that flat and many times you need to actually just get rid of that ironing being so that you can actually tuck it in and I'm going to make sure that it actually stays in there that's one form of the metered corner okay and obviously guys i did not measure this if i measure these two would be long even you know the same length and um there we go so that's one way of doing a metered corner there is obviously the way where you geez, you can you can actually sew this there now that you have that line you can actually sew them together those two lines on that line like that so let me show you remember this is all the corners with that's why it's easy when you fold and iron it okay so that's the original square we've tucked that in and we've done that so if you need if i can just get a shorter piece of fabric here let's just get rid of some of this that i have to turn over okay so you can also now open it up because what we need is we need these two lines these two we need them to be sewn together for us to get a meter corner so i'm going to open it up i'm going to put it right side to right side line up my corner line up my lines i'm going to sew a pin it because my machines aren't set up to sew tonight like that and like that let's see if we can make it look like it was sewn we're gonna sew there down that line guys i promise you people people look at me and they go why you do everything because this is how i remember i don't have to go look in a book because i figured it out sort of by a visual way all right okay so Try and tuck this in. It's not gonna. It's not gonna tuck. Let me just tuck that. It should just tuck back right up. Okay. Obviously, I don't want to cut that bit off now. But if this was sewn, it would have made a perfect meter corner. But what you actually need to do, if you want to get this perfect, is you actually need to just cut away this seam allowance here. And obviously, another thing. That you would have done before is these would have been very nicely sewn so that you don't have raw edges 
and they would be the same length, which we also didn't measure. But I want to show you once we do it the right way. Ah, sure. oh, Siri, shush. <laughs> Siri wants, she feels she's feeling left out. Okay, so let's see how far we can get. And then we're going to turn it over. And because it's now not sewn perfectly, but we, we need to, it'll, it'll be closed up to that point. Can you see? Like that is a perfect metered corner. And you will, this will be sewn together, so you won't need to sew down there. You'll just be sewing on there. That's the one metered corner. Then you also get another metered corner that um, works with bias binding but I will have to show you that with bias binding and machine because I need to sew something and then sew something again. Any other questions? Um, the stitch in the ditch goes, um, I will show that to you next week as I said um, because of the machine instructions and uh, I didn't set up this machine I only set up that machine but I'll do that quickly next week and I'll also do the stitch in the ditch because that goes hand in hand with um, sewing by binding. And I will do the metered corner for when you're doing finishing your quilt and you want to use by binding to finish your quilt. Any other questions, Matt? I oh yes, there was one here. I just lost it. Um, hi, sorry, one second. Uh -uh. It's too many. Okay, I lost that. Oh, any luck with the embroidery stand? In <clears throat> The what? With the embroidery stand. Stand? Yes. Oh, I forgot about that. Um, no. But I saw one again. I have a new supplier and I, wa I was looking at them and I thought to myself, I should ask you guys, do you, would you prefer one that stands like on its own on the floor and you would sit at it and work? Or do would you guys prefer one that actually is like, stands on a table because I never realized that was the big difference between them but that I saw one a standing one and then I thought that might be too big for some people maybe I should rather find a tabletop one which I have found I just would like to know which one you guys like would like rather okay, no, I think we're good then I think just that's... see if she answers that question about if she wants the big one or the small one. Stand on the table. On the table. Okay, I thought so. Luckily, I stopped myself from clicking send me a sample. <laughs> okay, I thought so. Because that big thing, it just looked to me like, where do you put this? Okay. I'm actually, I'm glad you asked uh, you asked that. Because I, had, I have completely forgotten to ask that. Okay. Any other questions? Guys, I don't know if you know, but we have wool now. We have quite a few different kinds of wool. Um, just something else. I am tasting this scissor. Isn't it pretty? It's a little bit small for my hands, but I have really big hands. Um, I'm tasting it because this is a new supplier. And it is hot knife through butter is nothing compared to this. So... Um, I'm just going to use it for a week or so because what I have noticed is you buy an expensive or you you keep more expensive scissors and then they don't really last that much longer. So I am testing it. I bought myself one so that I can test it for you. Yeah, I think that's everything. Just check it everywhere. Good. No, no questions, no questions. No, I think we're good. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Please leave us a like and a love and a poo emoji and hearts and whatever. And um, I would still like to know if you guys have something specific um, that we have not done yet that you need me to do a tutorial on. I have had quite a few um, questions or 
um, people asking for like tablet and laptop bags that's just you know a tablet bag is a laptop bag depending on how big you make it um, so I am I'm in the process of making a pattern for that um, and also something else was asked for um, but please go have a look we've done boxer shorts we've done aprons I've had questions for aprons we've actually done one there is a live where I make an apron there's a boxer short um, there is a uh, someone said a, a little pouch for your tools we've done two or three of those already go have a look as I said go to www dot fabric the word fabric the number eight dot co dot za and on the first page you'll see at the top menu it's all written in pink there's a really bright pink block that says free sewing lessons click on that that is where all the links to our, all our patterns all our tutorials everything that we um we've we've uploaded a uh, pdf version of the embroidery thread color charts everything that i find that i think you guys should have i will put there something else we also all the links for our whatsapp groups on there we have quite a few different whatsapp groups we have two sewing um whatsapp groups we have an afrikaans malfat groupie um we have embroidery we have knitting we have crochet we have oh, i can't remember what else anyway we have quite a few different ones we also have a group specially for our old old beasts is that a word ogs our ogs so those are the people we ask if we want to know something about would you like this would you like it if we stop this how would you prefer us to move the live tuesday if there's load shedding we ask those people because we know they want to hear from us we know they want to help us so please go and have a look please join them they are busy sometimes they actually some days they're not busy at all and then suddenly they just go off and there's like 150 messages i try and answer but the nice thing about this group is there is a lot of people on there that have sewn for a while and these newbies and it's it, i've learned from the group i've seen things that i didn't know the answer to being explained or on the group it really is helpful especially if you're new at this or if you just feel like you would like some inspiration those people the people are posting the most amazing things they've done and then they help you to tell you ah, i found the pattern here or there or that or i just did this and i changed that please go uh, switch it on mute so that it doesn't bug you all day long and you can you know watch it in your tea break or watch I mean you can read them in your tea break or like me i read it as a bedtime story join there are actually two questions yes here. Um, go. can amanda please show me the easy wood tailors ruler set so easy wood trailer ruler set. yes i can i can i am actually out of stock on the one we are awaiting stock but i i do have some of them you yeah, guys, this is an opportunity if you want to get lost questions and you can do it now quickly while Amanda does this. So if you have another question, please send it to us. Okay, so these these are, um, that's the one. That's an L square, obviously, that you can use. And then it has all the other shapes in there. I don't know what they use for people. The pattern making system I use, I do not use rulers like this. So I never actually learned to use rulers like this and then we have this one very interesting because the words on here is oh wait it says back neckline and then it says sleeve side back front armhole armhole front neckline side of skirt okay so so that's like a, a hip curve again this one also will be an l square and then this one is the one that I'm actually out of stock on. Um, there is five rulers in this. Um, this is a set that arrived here broken, so we only have three of the bits. But there is another long piece, I think. But this is what they look like. They, they, they need to be handled with care, I think. But if you're the only person using them, uh, and I, I mean, I don't think you could cut with an anti-cutter 
next to them. This I would use solely for drawing patterns. Um, because they are made of wood, um, there is nothing stopping your NC cutter or even your rotary blade just taking some of the wood off. Um, I have a... Uh, I've actually just um, gotten a new supplier. Sorry, I am tripping over the things I bumped off earlier. I have a new supplier, and this new supplier, I saw that they had a really cool L square. So it's probably going to take two weeks to get the first stock, um, but as soon as I have them, I'll show you. And, then and I think, and the difference of the Taylor's square ruler set. I'm not sure if I already asked it. Yes. Okay. What's the difference? I don't know. I, as I said, it's not, I, I I can do patterns, but I use the metric pattern making system, and in that you don't actually use armal squares and all of that. And then I also use the Italian pattern making system, and I don't use those ruler for that either. And um, I had a lecture in my second year, I think. And she, when we started taking out our French curves and things, she, she told us, um, have you ever, ever seen uh, a fashion designer use a French curve? You need to be able to draw it by hand. So I had to learn. <laughs> okay, I think that's everything, guys. No other questions and everything like that? Okay, guys, listen, we shall see you next week. Are you here, Matt? No, I'm not here next week. You're not here, I'm Matt, not next, here next week. week. Okay, no, guys. We will let you know, but we might have to skip next week because Lisa's not here, Matthew is not here. I am definitely not going to be able to set up this whole thing alone. So we will see and, and see if we can sort something out. Maybe we just do a simple one with two screens, Aww. then I might be able to do it. But we, we, shall, we shall let you know. We also have a WhatsApp group that just same that just is um i think it's the information group updates. so uh, updates yeah so nobody can nobody has only we can send you stuff and that is when we will say we have load shedding between six and eight so we're not going to have live share or we're moving it to wednesday or we're moving it earlier or we're moving it later or new stock arrived um uploaded on the website that is that's all you're going to get there there's not a thousand messages a day if you're lucky, it's like three a week. Yay! Yes, that's right. So, thank you guys. I shall hopefully speak to you. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> I shall hopefully speak to you next week if we can get this sorted. If um, if not, I shall speak to you in two weeks when Matthew's back. <laughs> okay. Good night. Enjoy your week. Happy Good. sewing. Clean your machines. Say so goodbye to Instagram, I mean YouTube and Facebook. Bye Instagram, YouTube and Facebook.